standing waves. This is something in the older syllabus. It used to be in HL only, but now it's moved to the SL syllabus. And I have this picture here, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's a dog playing the guitar because uh, we're going to be talking about guitar strings. So what are standing waves? Um, this is a dynamic situation, so I can't really draw it. But you have to imagine in a system that's closed. So for example, in a string with both ends that are actually uh, fixed. When I say fixed, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're attached somehow. Um, what happens is this you start a wave that goes one way and you have another wave that goes the other way and what happens is they're going to meet and remember they're going to have interference and superposition in just such a way so if the frequency and the amplitude are constant these two waves are meeting in superposition you know they're working in opposite directions and they can it's technically just two waves that are bouncing back and forth they're bouncing and reflecting as they do that um, and they're both meeting in just such a way as it looks like the string itself goes up and down. Technically, it's two different waves that are actually meeting with each other. But it ends up looking like the string goes up and down. Uh, so in this case right here, if we have a, uh, we'll talk about three different situations here. Uh, but the first one here, if we have a, a situation where it's fixed at both ends, so for example, a guitar or a piano, uh, those actual strings on the piano are like this. They're fixed at both ends, they're held still. Um, these right here then are areas where it won't move. So we have what's called the fundamental, which is like the simplest solution to this. And this almost becomes like a game. I don't recommend you memorize these things. I recommend you just sort of learn how to play the game. So the game is this. What you do is you take your um, string, for example, and you have to imagine it then going sort of up and down and up and down. It doesn't, you know, technically it's two different waves going back and forth, but it ends up making the wave go up and down. So the simplest solution is something like, I mean, I'm not drawing it very well, but something like this. Or, and of course it can go down at the bottom as well. So what this is, this is the string going up and down and up and down. When you first pluck it, that's what it'll do. We call that the fundamental frequency. Sometimes we call it the first harmonic. It looks like this. Let's look at the second one now. So the next one, the second harmonic, it's going to be in that same string. We still have to fit you know, we have to have this fixed at these two ends right here. It has to be fixed. So does it right here too. Fixed and fixed here. And the rule is this. Every harmonic you go up, you just add one of these fixed points here in the middle. So in this case right here, you've got to be fixed here and fixed here and fixed here. And these other places then are places of maximum intensity. Can you see like maximum amplitude here? So right in the middle, it goes up and down the most. All right? So if you're actually looking at the string, it'll really look like it goes up here. The second harmonic is going to be like this, where you can actually fit something like this right here. It still has to come back in, but then it has to come back in like this right here. That's one. And of course I can draw the dotted line version because you have to imagine this thing here going up and down. That's why I draw the dotted line, just so you can kind of see it's going sort of, you know, up and down and up and down like this. It's something that really does shake like this. Uh, the third harmonic is similar, except instead of having one of these points that doesn't move in the middle, you have two of them. So again, hopefully you can figure out how to do it. It goes up, then down, then up. Oops, I'm not drawing it very well, but there we go. I'll just put my point there. And we draw the dotted line version, of course, and there we go. And do you see how you can do the fourth harmonic and fifth and sixth and seventh and so on? So the important thing here then is to consider what is the length of this uh, tube here, or in this case, this uh, string. So we're gonna define something right here. We're gonna call it L. That'll be the length right here. So the length of this right here, because that's the length of your string in this case. And we're going to see a relation between the length and the wavelength. So watch very carefully. Do you remember how wavelengths work? Wavelengths work like this, right? One whole wave could be, oh, I'll just have it like this right here. So you see how one whole wave, there's a lot of different ways of fitting a wave, right? We can consider a wave um, starting here and finishing here. That could be one wavelength. So could it be from here to here? That could be a wavelength. We could start from here and finish here. That could also be a wavelength. A lot of different ways of looking at it. So let's look here then. What fraction of a wavelength do we fit inside L? In other words, if you look at this equation right here for L, or not this equation, but this, uh, this situation here, this string, we need a relation between L and lambda. And take a look at this. L, if you look at it, you see how it's actually half of a wavelength? In other words, this part that goes up like that, that's only half of a wavelength because you need another half to make it work. I always imagine you, know, you copy and paste this again. 
If you copied just this piece and you pasted it again, it would go like this. That's not a wave. That's how you know you didn't do it right. If you copy and pasted it though and it does give you what you need, then that's that's a wavelength. So for example, this right here, it's only half of a wavelength. So I'm going to say lambda over 2. This is the sort of key equation you need for this one. I just draw them. I don't memorize these. I just draw them. I think it's easier. Second harmonic, take a look at this then. What fraction of a whole wave do I have? Well, see, it goes up and then it goes down. Imagine if I copy and pasted that piece, this piece right here, and then I put it back in again on itself like this. See how it would continue the pattern? That's how I know that this is actually, or you can see it one up, that's lambda over two. So this is one lambda over two, two lambda over two. So that means I have L equals lambda. So here, the length of the string is equal to the wavelength. Let's look at this one then. Let's count by these lambda over twos. This one I have one lambda over two, two lambda over two, three lambda over two. That's why I think this becomes easier to count it that way. That's how you deal with this one. Let's play a similar game now, but instead of fixed at both ends, oh, by the way, don't forget this. Uh, if ever you need to convert between velocity or, uh, or speed, sorry, or frequency or lambda or the wavelength, you can always use this. Let's do the two other examples here, open at one end, closed at the other. For example, a clarinet, trumpet, something like that. That's something where it's open at one end, closed at one end where you're blowing on it, open at the other end. So here's what happens. We were learning these rules before. It has to be fixed sort of at this end. So this end right here on the left is going to always be a fixed point. But where it's open, that's where we're going to have maximum amplitude here. So it has to be sort of flappy going up and down, imagine that. That means this one is going to go like this. Something like that. Oops, I drew it really poorly. Try that again. Something like that. And then dotted line goes like that. That was it goes sort of up and down and up and down like that. Uh, the second one is going to have a, a point in the middle here where it doesn't move. So that means it has to go up and then it has to go back down to this one. And then it has to go like that. And this one here will go like that, up here and across. Second one has two in the middle. Oh, sorry, the third harmonic. Uh, so that means it'll go up, and then down, and then up, and then sort of flappy, so to speak. Same idea here. This is sort of what you need to be able to draw pretty quickly. And remember, um, this whole thing here is L. This whole length right here, right? That length right there is L. So is this, so is this. So let's do the equation again for this. How does this look? Let's see here what we have here. L equals what fraction of a wavelength? Look carefully here. We've got from here only going up. That's not a whole wavelength, is it? Can you imagine if I had another one of them, like another length, that would be that, then another one would be this, and then another one would be this. So I've only got one quarter of a wavelength. Can you see like sort of going from the middle to the top is one quarter, top to the middle, middle to the bottom, bottom to the middle again, and that makes one wave. In other words, I'm looking at lambda over four here. Look at the second one here. If each of these sort of quarters is a quarter wavelength, then let's count in quarters here. Here I've got one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. So I can say L equals three lambda over four. What fraction of a wavelength do I have here? Let's see, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters. So that's why L equals five lambda over four. Again, you don't have to memorize these. Some people do. I just like to draw them and you can figure it out. Let's go again to the last uh, page right here of the new stuff here. Open at both ends. For example, a flute, you know, it's got uh, a tube or a pipe that's open at both ends and you blow across the top of it to make that standing wave. Um, so this one right here is a special case. Um, well, it's gotta be sort of flappy at both ends. So we're gonna have this point right here in the middle. So it's gonna go like this, sort of like that. And then this one's gonna go like this. That's the fundamental or first harmonic. Next one's going to have two of these bad boys in the middle. So, of course, it goes down and back up again. And then like this. And the third one's going to have three of them. So it's going to go down, then up, then down. And like this. There we go. So let's look at then again. This is L, remember? This is L, so is this, so is this. Let's look at what fraction of a wavelength we have here. This is maybe not so easy to see, but look carefully at this piece right here. Do you see this piece right here from here to here? So from a top to a bottom was really what we have here. 
Do you see how we actually technically have half of a wavelength? Because if I had two of them, can you see that that would be a top to a top? It's not so obvious. This is actually half of a wavelength. Because if you had two of these, and one and then two of these, if you copy and paste it, you know, sort of this whole thing, then you would see that you would be able to continue this whole path here. So this is a whole wavelength here. So if each of these things, sort of top to bottom, is a half wavelength, let's look at this. The second harmonic goes from top to bottom, that's one half. Then bottom to top, that's two halves. Two halves equals lambda. Does that make sense as a whole wavelength? I hope so, because see, you're starting off here, you're going down like this. That's one wavelength, isn't it? You can say that's, that's one lambda. This next one then, top to bottom is one half. This is two halves, this is three halves. That's why it's three lambda over two. That's how you do these. So again, knowing how to do the drawings and knowing the rules of this game can really help you out. Let's do a real example here. So we have an organ pipe and it's open at one end and closed at the other. And before anything else, and I'm just gonna start by drawing myself that. There we go, there's my organ pipe. And I know it has a fundamental frequency of 16 Hertz. What does that mean? Remember, let's just draw the fundamental frequency of this thing. That's fixed at this end, flappy at the other end, therefore it goes like this, or it goes like this. And before anything else, remember, we can still, this is how I do these, I just right away just start drawing this thing. I just draw the whole thing. What, uh, what fraction of the wavelength do we have here again? Do you remember? You don't have to look it up, we'll figure it out again. So L equals, let's see here, what fraction of a wavelength do we have? This is a quarter, isn't it? Because it goes from middle to the top. I would need a top to the middle, middle to the bottom, bottom to the middle to make a whole wavelength. That's how I know I have lambda over four. Let's see how this is gonna help me. I know that the frequency of this is 16 Hertz. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what to do with that one. We have the speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second. And the question is, what's the length? That's what we're looking for. What's the length? So I hope you see it's actually not so hard at all to do. Because we already know the drawing here and we figured out this relation, this is actually the key to solving is this L equals lambda over four. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use, remember this uh, handy dandy equation here, um, V equals F lambda? I'm gonna need that one. So I'm gonna use that equation, V equals F lambda. Oops, maybe my F looked a little bit gross here. F lambda. I'm gonna use that because, do you see I have F and I have V, but I need lambda. So I'm gonna get lambda by itself. So of course that's V over F. So in this case, V is 330 meters per second. We could say, right, over seconds here. And we have a frequency of 16 Hertz, but a Hertz is a one over second. And if we're doing one over one over second, the seconds come on top. That's why they disappear and we have a length in meters. So that'll work out. Let's see, what is that? That's uh, 330 divided by 16. I just get out my calculator. And I end up with uh, 20.625 meters. That's a pretty long uh, wavelength, isn't it? 20 meters long, imagine that. Uh, all right, what do I do with this right here? Well, I can take this number then and do what? I know that L is lambda over four. So I just literally do that. So L then equals this lambda, which is 20.625 over four. So I'm gonna do that, I'll divide them, divide by four, and I get 5.15625 meters. So what do I do with my final answer then? How do I uh, deal with it? I have to look at how many uh, digits I'm allowed to use. I'm allowed two here, I'm allowed two. So I'll use two digits. So I'll say five point, in this case right here, we'll round it up to two, I guess. This will be my length, 5.2 meters. That must be a huge organ then. Uh, but there you go, that's how it works. I hope that makes sense with uh, standing waves.